Hello there. Welcome back to the channel. The Borg. Often an sometimes ominous threat, sometimes a malevolent enemy, sometimes they even became perhaps, once the Federation became familiar with them, a little too easy to defeat. Personally, and I heard a lot of complaints that Star Trek Picard used the Borg far too much, but I like to think that I emphasize as a different a different thing we need to think about. When Q flung the Enterprise into the path of that first Q, let's forget about the Raven or those events from Enterprise or any other possible encounters the Borg may have had over the years, especially with other Federation races, not just the Starfleet, like races, although not part of the Federation, like the Elorians. When he did that, the Enterprise got its ass thoroughly handed to it. But by the time of Picard, all of Janeway's encounters with them, all the battles, Wolf 359, Sector 001, all the border conflicts, the encounters with sort of fringe Borg groups like the Cooperative, like the Renegade Borg, Starfleet, the other Alpha Quadrant powers, the Federation generally, had learnt a lot about the Borg. And I like to think it wasn't so much the Borg had become easy. They weren't just suddenly defeatable. I think there's a reason the Borg haven't assimilated the entire galaxy. I, they're not the unstoppable force that they like to make you think they are. Now, the Q do often say, don't provoke the Borg. Now, there's probably a bigger reason for that. Probably something to do with the Elorians being assimilated by the Borg and, you know, the Elorians and the, and the Q having this weird little thing, whatever that was. But I like to think it shows how much the Federation and Starfleet have come. They've learned, they've adapted, they've grown, they've evolved, they've become more powerful. We know that multiple civilizations, 8472, 116, all held their own against the Borg. The Romulans, we've seen them battle the Borg, they hold their own. It's not that the Borg are invincible. It's just that they're very, very powerful, but there are weaknesses to their technology. And the Borg's tendency to only evolve through assimilation, not through adaptation, means that they have an inherent weakness and flaw when dealing with other races like humans, Romulans, the Dominion, 8472, whoever. Because those races analyze, we study, we learn, and we grow. If we survive the first few encounters, of course, there is the whole argument about the Borg farming the galaxy which personally I think is true. I think that is, I don't think the Borg always want to assimilate you in total. I think they just want to cherry pick and then wait a few years, maybe even decades and come back and do the same. The Federation, because of its very nature, being although non-violent, was able to figure out the best way to defeat an enemy like the Borg. I think it more shows how humanity and the Federation and Starfleet had evolved. But also that's not to say that the Borg don't adapt, that they're completely useless. And that brings us to the Class IV Tactical Cube. This behemoth of a vessel, this giant of a ship, which was in dimensions as far as we can tell actually about the same as a standard cube, which is a behemoth of a ship. We should not underestimate just how big a Borg cube is. It's 3,000 meters cubed, so it's, it's a big ship, each one containing an average 100,000 drones, sometimes more, sometimes less, but 100,000. doesn't need 100,000 but it has a hundred thousand because it can, because the Borg don't view individual drones as worthwhile. The Class IV Tactical Cube was developed by the Collective at an unknown point in history, possibly in the 2370s, but it may have been earlier, to deal with particularly resistant races. It could have been from their experiences with 8472, but considering the advanced power of their weapons, I don't think even the, the Tactical Cube would have been able to engage them. So maybe it was more to deal with races like the Federation. Its most notable difference was heavy plate armor attached to the outer hull, rather than relying on hull regeneration and, you know, analyzing and adapting like a normal Borg vessel. This ship is actually designed to resist the punishment. Its shields are a bit different. It's much more heavily armed, more heavily armored. It's not that the weapons it carries are any particularly different than a standard Borg vessel. It's just got more of them. Interiors of the ship are also a little bit different. It's not as sort of open and easy, well not easy, no Borg vessel is easy to navigate, but a sort of, as sort of open tech as the inside of a Borg vessel. Everything's defended, multi-phasic multi shielding, layered defenses within the cube. They're far less likely to simply ignore you when you board this vessel. Although they still kind of react like a normal Borg, the ship is built like a beast. It is a juggernaut. It is a titan of a ship 
built for war, not just assimilation. This cube was built to take a hell of a pounding as well as give it. So the Borg are capable of adaptation. Unfortunately, there's only one known encounter with this vessel by the USS Voyager in 2374. How many of these ships the Borg had is unknown, but probably a considerable number of them, considering the Borg had millions of ships. Probably, allegedly. But the cubes are massive. The Class IV Tactical Cube, in its name, is a tactical variant of a standard cube, which in its strictest sense probably is a warship, but also isn't. It's more like a mobile assimilation factory for the Borg. This vessel was actually built with conquest and fighting in mind. It had survivability, durability, and endurance, not just the, as well as the standard Borg features like analyzing and adapting and being able to make on-the-spot repairs and regenerations far faster than the vessels that it was probably engaging. That's again not to say the ship was invulnerable, but it was certainly more powerful than the standard Borg cube. How successful? Unknown. I would say if this was such a superior vessel, the Borg would have simply replaced the entire fleet with these ships. Maybe they were in the process of doing that, but one will never know because the Borg Collective kind of imploded not long after this. But that is the Borg Class 4 Tactical Cube. And I really wish there was more information on it that was Alpha Cannon, but I don't cover Beta Cannon. But if you want to want to talk about Beta Cannon sources, go right ahead in the comment section down below. Love to hear it. Love to have the dialogue. It's actually a ship I really wish we'd seen more of because I wanted to see what it was capable of. We, we got told the Borg built a tactical vessel and then we never really got to see it in use. Imagine if like 20 of these things are turned up for the Battle of 001. Which originally, again, in one of my videos I previously mentioned, the Battle of 001 was actually meant to include multiple Borg, ship, Borg vessels, not just the one cube, which would have been very cool, in my opinion. Anyway. But let me know yours in the comment section down below. If you made it all to the end of this video, I thank you for watching, and bye-bye.